All righty. <clears throat> vintage Cube. Here we go. I have no idea what changes were made to Vintage Cube. Hmm. So... I don't want to do I don't want to do storm unless it's obvious that I should absolutely be doing storm. Um, there is a cabal ritual in Palancron for the storm archetype. There's a windswept teeth. There's also a bizarre of Baghdad. Um, I don't know what archetype this is used in in Vintage Cube actually. Let's see. <clears throat> so we could take we could take a ball ritual if we wanted to do storm. We could take Mother of Runes if we wanted to go like an aggressive white deck. Green Sun Zenith for the green deck. Uh, Char for a mono red deck of some kind. Maybe Wildfire. I think. Now, not to say Bizarre is not an insane card. I just don't know how to use it in this cube. So I'm just going to take Wandering Fumarole. Blue and red are some of the better colors in Vintage Cube. Um, simply because of all of the artifact synergies. Like Mox Ruby? Um, this was definitely, like, either between, like, someone opened Mana Crypt and Mox Ruby, or another Mox and Mox Ruby. Um, so there is a Bribery in this pack, more Fetchlands, a Mishra's Workshop, and a Jace Friends Prodigy, along with Kiki. We're taking the Mox, obviously, but, like, usually the only time you see Mox get passed is when they're opened in multiples at the same time. Okay, so we have a couple of options here. We can just draft, like, artifacts, because there's, like, Thrawn Dynamo here. And we can we can definitely do, like, blue-red artifact ramp, tinker, whatever you want to call it. Or, alternatively, Mox Ruby is really good in the mono-red deck, because mono-red is really fast. But mono-red starting with two lands on turn one is even faster. Um, considering that there are basically no mono red cards here, uh, except maybe Lightning Helix, and that's not even really a mono red card, I think I'm just going to go with Thrawn Dynamo. Um, okay. Okay. There's a Chrome Mox. Uh, Natural Order, Solemn Simulacrum. So, Chrome Mox is better in Storm style decks because it's kind of like pitch a card from your hand and ritual for a color. Um,. The Solemn Simulacrum is really good ramp. It's kind of regardless. I think I'm going to go Chrome Mox. This, I, this might be the wrong deck for it, uh, considering how many colorless cards I'm anticipating on getting. All right, we're just going to take Sad Robot. Okay, in this pack, we have Moat, Bomet Courier, Shark Typhoon, Watery Grave, also excellent colors, Skull Clamp, and a Signet. I think I'm just going to go Signet. Artifact ramp is uh, it's pretty good. Okay, so we're kind of centered on blue and red. We have lots of artifacts. Um, what do we take here? Doesn't want to give you any red cards. Yeah, no kidding. Welcome to the stream. Uh, sorry, you're kind of far away on my screen. Dill 33 Hill, welcome. Also, thanks for the follow. Oh, I'm on the wrong. I'm on the wrong. <laughs> there we go. Uh, sorry. It didn't. Uh, it didn't do the animation because I was. I started streaming on the wrong overlay. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm gonna pick Thrag Tusk because I don't know what to pick. He's probably. We're not probably not playing Thrag Tusk. So we can take Emery here. Emery is strong and artifact related. Um, there's Botanical Sanctum if we want green mana and blue mana. We can take Avalanche Riders, which is kind of fun. Um, I'm gonna take Emery. No, but seriously, thanks for the follow. You're a wonderful human being. Much appreciated. <clears throat> ah, so we've gotten some amount of artifact ramp. We're going to be looking for... Vintage Cube is fun. It is by far my favorite format to play on Magic the Gathering Online right now. But definitely favorite Moto format. Um, so we're going to be on the lookout for... Let's see. Things like Sundering Titan, Blightsteel, um, just big dumb artifact beaters. We're going to be on the lookout for Tinker, um, Dak Faden. I'm trying to think of what else. Well, I mean, it's a little late to be doing the mono red thing. We could take Oath of Druids if we get some very large creatures. Like, I'm fine oathing into a Blightsteel or like an Emrakul or something like that. 
Um, it, it might compete with Emery, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, I don't think I'm playing Mana Flare, so both it is. Okay, so I think because we're doing the Artifact Ramp thing, this is a Wildfire deck. I'll play Wildfire. I think this was the pack. It's either this pack or the next pack that had Mishra's Workshop in it, um, which I took the Mox over, so... <laughs> Uh, we'll take Copperline Gorge, because there's nothing else really in that pack we need. Bonfire could potentially be a lot of damage. Um, we could play Land Tax just to get a bunch of lands out of our deck, too. You know what, I'll take Bonfire. Okay, so we're not getting a Mishra's Workshop this game, but I'm okay with that. Alright, Hellrider, or... I think Hellrider is the one we're most likely to be playing. I mean, it's not incredibly likely to be played, but out of the cards we were just given, it's the most likely. Um, guess I'll take a moat. It's always good to have a pocket moat. Dire Fleet Daredevil. Okay. All right, so very weird uh, start to a vintage cube here. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we got an Urza and a top and batter skull. Um, so I think Urza is the strongest card in this pack for us. It does compete with the whole Oath of Druids angle. We could take Hollowed Fountain if we're worried about fixing, but I mean, like, turning all of your artifacts into Mox Sapphires has got to be good, so we'll just take Urza. Someone passed a second Mox this game. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but it's upsetting me. Um... Indeed interesting. Uh, I want Lightning Greaves out of this pack to wheel, but I will take a Mox Emerald. I'm, just, I'm not going to turn down Moxes. It must have been a God pack, yes. Um, there's not... So, like, unless it's an a, a, you open two Moxes and one of them's on color and one of them's not, the only times I can see someone picking something over a Mox is, like, occasionally Soul Ring or Mana Crypt. Um, might be powerful enough, depending on what deck you're playing. So in this pack, we have the option of Wasteland, Stomping Ground, or like, Fixing, obviously. We can take Olgari Signet, Frexian Revoker. Um, we could also play Mentor, because we have Moxus, but uh, we could take Mentor and see if top we I think we just take the Like, don't get me wrong, Wasteland, and so are most of I mean, I guess I could the Signet's going to be and we're going to be trying to be a little more proactive. Sad to see Scalding Tarn. I could take Scalding Tarn. I could take Scalding Tarn or Brave. And Scalding Tarn is, is really good, and I, it's not going to... The problem is, Tezzeret, what this deck... If we take Tezzeret... If we take Tezzeret, Scalding Tarn is not going to wheel. If we take Scalding Tank, how important is... I'm going to go with the Scalding... It's kind of a... All right, in this pack, we got some sideboard option. Oh, I guess the blinds, first card. In so, Duretti, minus trash for treasure. So, Sack is a very powerful... We have, like, no big payoff artifact. I still think we take him. I'm not... Even though I did... Re <laughs> Um, Goblin Welder is good, but I'm not going to pass Basalt. I'm really hoping to, uh, um, so there's a Dig Through Time, which is playable. There's also a Vendicar, because we're kind of in this position where, is it, kind of goes, or we can, I think I want to go dig, because, like, even though we're not filling the grave with a bunch of stuff, it can help dig for ways. Okay, so Smokestack, is, uh, for me, not that I'm going to play again. Uh, there's also Stone, Stone Coil Serpent, which we wouldn't mind, the Stone Coil Serpent, uh, and I feel like we're pretty light on ways to um, Rashad and Port can tax our- Let's take- Let's take- Porcelain Leaf Blast is good at- Legionnaire is another- We could take Stomping Ground. We could also take Wasteland, see if we get Crucible, because then we could Wasteland, Smokestack, Crucible, play- That sounds like- Okay, Tezzeret did not wheel- I'm gonna- Ramanop Excavator does- Firebolt's playable. I don't know if I'm playing- Triple Mock, and we had the option- Wow, quadruple Mock. So we had the option for five Moxes. <laughs> um, okay. So, shit. I mean, I gotta take the Mox. The problem here is I would definitely play Uro in this deck. Um, Alright, we're taking the Mox. I don't want to stare at that pack for too long, otherwise I might do something dumb. Agreed. It does hurt. <clears throat> so, we can take Signet. It's a green Signet, so it technically does kind of fix our mana a little bit. The problem is... We have all of this ramp and no payoff at all. Literal literal none right now. Um, and there's no payoff in this pack that's in our colors worth ramping into. So we might be playing one win condition ramp by the end of this pack, which is kind of scary. I'm going to take Selesnya Signet. 
Let's go pick three Tinker, pick four Blight Steel, and we can just... We'll be fine. <laughs> Actually, Blight Steel would not synergize very well with Duretti. Scrap Savant. Um, hmm. Okay. Crater Hoof Uro, Mox Diamond, and Mox Jet. Yeah. Okay. So, in this pack, we have several good picks. We can take Fast Bond, which is absurd ramp. Um, especially, actually, if we could get Upheaval and, like, a creature to win the game with, that'd be fantastic. So we can take Fast Bond, we can take Faithless Looting, and even Time Spiral is playable in the deck that we're doing right now. Uh, Time Spiral is not as good simply because we're not going to uh, untap a bunch of lands because most of our mana comes from artifacts. I think we either want Fast Bond or Faithless Looting. Um, I'm going to take Fast Bond. It just does broken things. Okay. So, Chandra is a way to technically win the game, but she's kind of slow. She's not some big giant thing that just instantly impacts the board and kills everything. We have very few things that can wield a Sword of Fire and Ice um, effectively. So I think that means we take Lodestone Golem. Despite the fact that Lodestone Golem isn't great. Uh, oh, actually, we could take Bitter Blossom. Because Bitter Blossom and Smokestack is excellent. And Bitter Blossom, while technically a little outside of the colors we were wanting to play here, I think works. So let's do that. Okay. So Hangerback. Hangerback is also excellent with Smokestack and doesn't have like any color requirement at all. So take hanger back. Okay. So Smuggler's Copter is good. Coercive Portal is really good. Inkwell Leviathan is top end, and so is Terastodon. And Inferno Titan, of course. So we could really take like any of the big things from this pack or Coercive Portal. Um So the pick, in my opinion, I think is between Coercive Portal, Inferno Titan, and Terastodon. I'm not a huge fan of Inkwell. And I think I'm gonna go Inferno Titan, just because we need we need big things so bad. Um, okay, I think I gotta go Tireless Tracker. There are other cards in this pack that are good, but I think Tracker is the best in our deck. It's not great, but it is good-ish. Okay, I'm not gonna pass a Jitte, even though we have like nothing that carries Jitte other than Bitter Blossom tokens. <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty strong. Okay, so here we can take Cultivate or Mana Morphos. Um, I'm going to take Cultivate. We don't really need white mana. So. Um, I could take Dark Petition as just a really bad Demonic Tutor. I think we're actually going to play Master of the Wild Hunt or Assassin's Trophy, though, over it. This is a this is a horrible deck. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to take Master. Sack a permanent if you do gain a life, draw a card. Throw Vraska in the sideboard. Take Blooming Marsh. Take Hissing Quagmire. Uh, I guess Lightning Strike is removal that we could play if we needed to. Okay. So a couple of things. We are not playing Oath. The only creature we have that is even close to reasonable with Oath is Inferno Titan, which is terrible. <laughs> I, oathing into an Inferno Titan does not win the game. Um, especially when you need the other creatures in your deck, right? So, take out the lands. We're playing Thragged Husk. Let's see. These are basically lands, so we're going to ignore them for the most part right now. Get group creatures separately. We probably don't need Porcelain Legionnaire. And... I think Dig Through Time is probably our worst non-creature spell, which is a really weird sentence in any other context. Okay, so what's the plan? The plan with this deck is to artifact ramp out uh, either like Urza activations or a massive hangerback walker, then Miracle a Bonfire of the Damned. Uh, alternatively, it is to play Bitter Blossom and Smokestack and make my opponent very sad. Yeah, shoot. We didn't. We just didn't see any of the big artifact payoffs, despite the fact we were getting past so many artifacts. 
I got a feeling this is an 0-3 deck, and I am not thrilled about it. <laughs> okay. So we get some zero mana artifacts here. Actually, I'm going to drop Fast Bond. No, I'm not. I'm going to play Fast Bond, Wasteland, Ramanop Excavator. Um, and we're going to cut instead. I think Search for Tomorrow. Okay, let's add Basics. It says one island, two mountains, two forests. It is a fun three card combo, even if it is a three card combo and is terrible because of it. We do need a basic swamp in this deck because we have cultivate and um no i took i took search for tomorrow out just now okay all right yeah i don't think i'm gonna make any other changes uh, let's play this dumpster fire I have a very needy chocolate lab and is getting all up in my business right now saying he needs to be pet. Did you get the cheese out of your Kong yet? Go get your Kong. All right, round one, here we go. That's a turn one bitter blossom. Yeah, I'll keep. When it starts island, passes. We draw Copper Line Gorge. So play Copper Line Gorge, play Fast Bond, play Mox Emerald, Swamp, take a damage. Um, do we need to play around Spell Pierce? It's generally not a good idea to do what I'm doing right now and just play out lands with basically no payoff. Man, could you imagine if I had drafted an upheaval? Like how sweet this would be. All right, we played our entire hand of seven cards on turn one. <laughs> An intimidating start to be sure. Uh, <laughs> but now our opponent is just going to kill us. Alright, get a token. Oh, give me that sweet, sweet smokestack. Damn. We'll play land. Fire up Mutavault. Get in for two. Take our opponent to 18. Pass. Opponent plays an island. Loots. Discarding an island. Okay. They play Search for his God. Look at our opponent trying to draw cards. Uh, Scalding Tarn. Well, that thins our deck a little bit. <laughs> oh, I forgot to animate Mutavolt. Crap. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm playing around the bolt. I'm just going to say I played around the bolt. That's all. <laughs> Shit. All right, opponent. Untap, search for his Kanta trigger. They put... Oh, they're thinking about it. They don't know where the top card's supposed to go yet. Uh, they leave it on top. Opponent loots with Jace. Discarding a turnabout, so they are likely Storm. If they're Storm and they're bad Storm, we stand a chance. Not an amazing one, but a chance nonetheless. Get a mountain. There it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. Fire up Mutavault. We're going to see if we can get our opponent to interact. Attack for four. The gods are on my side. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I think technically this uh, level of plays would indicate they are. Replace Smokestack. Pray for no counter. Uh, opponent had to force. Exiling Thousand Year Storm. Wow. So now if we draw Wildfire, we just win the game. The whole, the old un, three untapped mana have to heart, or pitch for force of will play. Never mind, God's nowhere to be found. I'm not too worried yet. Opponent did not want to flip Jace, interestingly. Uh, they could have fetched prior to putting that ability on the stack. They discard Cabal Ritual. Oh, we have Lodestone Golem. So we have like a little bit of main deck hate simply versus Storm anyway. Okay, opponent fetches and shocks a Blood Crypt. He plays a Wishclaw Talisman. 
Interesting. We get a token. We draw. Oh boy. Fire up Mutavault. Go to combat. Attack for five. So it's worth noting I missed two damage. Uh, if that's relevant this game. We'll see. Opponent goes to four. We play Wasteland. Take him off black mana. Give me that sweet Ramanop Excavator. Let me get the double Wasteland power. Okay, opponent puts Baral into their grave. Flips his Kanta. It might be GG. And it, it we still could technically lose, though our opponent would have to run pretty hot. They pitch Steam Vents. They play an Island. So, like, their their hand would have to be High Tide Time Spiral. That's, that's basically what it would have to be. Or they'd have to be able to High Tide and Wish Claw Talisman for Time Spiral. Gush. Okay, Gush is not a bad start. Opponent's thinking. I don't think they can win, though. Because they're, so they're, like, they're out of lands. Okay, they're tutoring with Wish Claw Talisman. Gush does specify you return islands, yeah? Okay. Yeah. So it's not like they could have returned their other lands um, and kept the islands in play for High Tide. So, I mean, like, if we get to wish, we just wish for wildfire. <laughs> that is, if our opponent has anything that can answer the board. Okay, sweet, we won a game! Dumpster fire for tendrils for two. <laughs> nice. Well, our complete dumpster fire of a deck won a game. Uh, and we played our whole hand on turn one, which is kind of sweet, right? So... Uh, do we have anything we want to change up versus a storm deck? Uh, Dire Fleet Daredevil is technically Grave Hate. <laughs> um, and it might be more relevant than some of the other cards in our deck. I'm going to drop Firebolt for Dire Fleet Daredevil. If they have a like big Past in Flames or Yog Will set up, we can exile whatever their most important card is. It's pretty crappy Grave Hate, but like, I can make it work. Oh! Oh, this is so dirty. Land Mox Mox Signet. Untap Smokestack. <laughs> so yes, this is happening. Uh. Oh, actually, we can we can set it up with Basalt Monolith. We can do Land Mox Mox Monolith Signet. Opponent just F6 through their first turn. Okay, play Mox. Play Mox. Signet. Signet. Pass. I feel that was a pretty good, pretty good setup there. <laughs> Opponent starts Spire Bluff. Passes. We draw Copper Lion Gorge. So play Copper Lion Gorge. Play Smokestack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old. Turn two smokestack kill. <laughs> oh my god, we won a match. This is the most amazing deck I've ever drafted. It's such garbage, and it's so good. I guess I guess if you have three mocks in your deck, like three actual mocks in your deck, just casting a four mana card on turn one, even if it's terrible, is still good. Right? I mean, Smokestack, Smokestack's not a terrible card. But, like, if I were to cast, I don't know, turn two Master of the Wild Hunt as an example, which is, like, kind of a mediocre card because it dies to, like, every variant of burn spell that exists. But playing it on turn two makes it really good. I'm looking forward to whatever we play in, in round two here. All right, round two, here we go. Uh, we'll play first. Opponent says, good luck, have fun. We will say it back, because of course, we mean it. I always prefer when people have fun. Um, I think I'm gonna mulligan. This hand doesn't do anything for a long period of time. Neither does this one. Like, can we even cast anything? We can't even cast anything. We gotta go five. Okay, we could play a turn one Bitter Blossom. I think I'm okay with that. We'll put back Bonfire. And we'll put back Hissing Quagmire. 
Mutavolt, Mox Jet, Bitter Blossom. I feel like that's a pretty fair turn one. Pass the turn. Opponent starts Island. Preordains. Everybody likes to draft the powerful cantrips in Legacy and Vintage Cube. And I know it's... So playing with powerful cantrips is fun, right? Like pondering, preordaining, looking at three or four cards, getting to select which one you want to play. Stuff you don't get to do in regular Magic because it's too strong is fun. But there's a reason why I don't do it that often. And that reason happens to be that... Uh, you just get absolutely obliterated by anything aggressive when you do that. Like, I call Mono Red Fun Police in uh, Legacy and Vintage Cube simply because it polices everybody's fun. They want to draw cards, you just kill them on turn three. <laughs> Alright, so we attack with Mutavault, we pass. Opponent plays a Plains, so we're against a blue white control y looking deck. Okay. Get another token. We draw Urza. Play a forest. Fire up Mutavault. What are you whining about, dude? Go to combat. Attack for three. Is a cat over there not wanting to play? Okay, we take our opponent to 15 and pass. Opponent plays a Plains. And they have a Gideon Blackblade. Okay. They take him up to five. We untap. Get a token and draw a mountain. Well, we're a mountain away from Inferno Titan and an island away from Urza. Question here is, do we attack Gideon for four and take him to one? Or do we just attack our opponent? Or do we split the attacks? I think Gideon is going to be a problem, I just don't know how fast he's going to be a problem. So I'm going to go to combat, attack my opponent, attack my opponent, and I'm going to hit Gideon for one. Because Gideon's minus six is technically a problem, but we don't really care about a 4-4 attacking us right now, because we're probably going to outpace him. And then if we just draw, you know, another mountain, we can just nuke him from orbit or kill our opponent. Porter, the cat does not want to play with you right now. I highly suggest you do something else. Alright, opponent has a strip mine. They can strip mine Mutavolt, which does set us back. And they tick up Gideon. Okay. They hit us for four, we're not gonna block. Okay. We, we untap and get a Wasteland. Fire up Mutavolt. Okay. Opponent strip mines Mutavolt, that's fine. It does decrease our clock by quite a bit, but I'm actually okay with this. We'll attack our opponent for three. Opponent goes to nine. And play Wasteland. Pass the turn. Opponent paths a token. Perfect. It gets us our other mountain for Inferno Titan. Okay, opponent untaps. Opponent plays an Ancient Tomb. And a Sword of Fire and Ice. I'm going to nuke Ancient Tomb now. If they want to equip, they got to pay the life. Okay. It is unfortunate because it takes us off of Inferno Titan mana, but making our opponent lose the life now is more important, I think. So opponent gets in for six, they get to shock something. Probably a fairy. No surprise there. They get to draw an additional card. Okay, we untap, we get a fairy, we draw Mox Emerald. Okay, so play the Mox. Go to combat. Attack my opponent for two. Take them to five. So the problem here is my if my opponent has swords, maybe we should have left back an additional fairy, actually. That might have been a play mistake, my bad. We should have only attacked with one fairy and left two behind. 
Because my, now if my opponent has single target removal, they can just suit up with sword, kill the fairy, and get in to kill us. I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not looking forward to it, though. I think I might be screwed. Well, opponent is not windmill slamming removal, so maybe we're okay. Okay, opponent plays an island. And scoops it up. Oh my god, yes. Whoo, we got there. Alright, game two versus whatever our opponent is doing. Planeswalkery nonsense, blue-white control maybe. Um, it's possible we want to just be more aggressive uh, and run things like Abbott and... Uh, okay, no worries. Thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you again very soon. Um... Yeah, I think we're just going to run it back. I don't think we're actually going to make any uh, adjustments to the deck list. I could run like Vraska, but... Yeah. Okay, this hand is almost good. Um, we are on the draw, but that gives us two draw steps to hit land. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm going to go to six. Um, this is quite a bit better. Um, I will keep... I'm going to put back Firebolt. Opponent starts Concealed Courtyard. We draw Urza. I'll play Hissing Quagmire, pass the turn. They play Caracas, pass. We draw Mutavolt. Play Mutavolt, pass the turn. Three mana, opponent plays Gideon again. Takes him up. We untap. We draw Thrawn Dynamo. I'll we'll play a Mountain, play a Mock, play Master of the Wild Hunt, and pass the turn. Opponent plays an Island, and a Hero of Blade Hold. Okay. I give him indestructible and attack for four. no block mega wolf we draw mountain so play a mountain what do we do here so we can play thron dynamo and nothing else we can animate mutavolt and kill hero before it ever attacks but then they kill mutavolt um we can actually play thron dynamo and animate mutavolt and kill kill hero we can have him fight the wolf and kill hero with a braid can cast thrag tusk hmm. so i think the play is to a braid hero fight with a token animate mutavolt and hit gideon for two take him to four because he does have his little exile mode active and that does set us back quite a bit but it's also stopping hero from attacking which is a deal like thrag tusk doesn't stop hero from attacking and we could get totally wrecked in that scenario okay a braid hero bark fire up mutavolt Go to combat and attack you. To Gideon to four, we pass the turn. Now we can use Mutavolt as a additional wolf if we decide we no longer need the land to attack or for mana. Okay, opponent plays a figure of destiny. They make it a two-two. They give it indestructible until end of turn. And they hit us for four. We untap. We make a wolf. We draw Mox Ruby. So I think what we do here, we fight the figure, play Mox, play Dynamo, play Thrag Tusk. Okay, gain five life. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play planes. You go wait a sec, buddy. Come here. Come here. Oh, you want me to throw a toy? What plays Gideon Jura? Smites are tapped. Master of the Wild Hunt, which is kind of saddening. They take up Gideon. Attack us for four. We'll take it. We untap. We draw a swamp. Play a Swamp, go to combat, attack Gideon Jura for five. Kind of hoping we draw Bonfire at this point. Okay, opponent plays an island. Six mana for our opponent. Oh, please don't be Elspeth. Okay, Sun Titan getting back Figure of Destiny. That's annoying. Okay. They tick up on figure. Choosing indestructible. Opponent gets in for four. Takes us to nine. 
Show me bonfire. Oh! Oh, yes! Oh, called the shot. <laughs> X damage to target player or planeswalker and each creature that player or planeswalker controls. Uh, so we are going to cast it. We are going to kill Gideon. We're just going to go all out mana here. Okay, first off, I didn't do Jack. Second off, the guy who lit off the fireworks did get arrested. Was cooperating with police. And third off, pretty good, actually. Uh, go to combat. Attack our opponent for seven. Dude, you should see this deck we're playing Six Sigma. It is a dumpster fire. And the very first game, we played all seven cards in our hand on turn one. We won round one, by the way, and we are up a game right now. Put a place a Brimaz. King of Arescos. We draw Solemn Simulacrum. So we can fire up Hissing Quagmire. Uh, we could technically fire up Meta Vault, I just think that's a bad idea. Go to combat. Attack for seven. Isn't that the only thing people show up for? <laughs> I love the double blue card in hand with no blue mana. <laughs> yes, I believe he was in our opener. Um, so what it does block Thrag Tusk. They can bounce him. With, uh, they can bounce Bramaz with uh, Caracas, which does leave them a one-one. Oh, actually, no. If they bounce Bramaz to save him, Thrag Tusk just eats the token. It still succeeds in blocking Thrag Tusk, which I guess is the goal here. Opponent's in the tank. They go for it. They pick up Ramaz. Thrag Tusk eats a 1-1. One, one. Opponent takes two. Second main. Play Simulacrum. We'll go and get our only island. And pass. Opponent plays a planes. We'll get a toy. Where's a toy? I'll throw it for you. I'm not going to chase you, though. Obviously. Come here. Only one island, yes. We have so much artifact ramp. We have three moxes in this deck. Uh, several blue signets, I think. No, one blue signet. And... Shoot, do I have enough blue sources for this? No, we have... Um... I will take what you're saying under consideration <laughs> for round three. <laughs> Uh, opponent plays a Karn Liberated. They exile Thrag Tusk, which gives us a beast. That's fine. Untap. We draw Scalding Tarn, which cannot fetch blue. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry, everybody wearing headphones. Oh, my God. So we can attack for f nine and take our opponent to two. Play Scalding Tarn. Fetch with Scalding Tarn. Unsub! <laughs> scalding Tarn, fetch. There might not even be any... There's no mountains left. That was a landfall trigger. <laughs> okay, um... Fire up Mutavault. <laughs> oh, man. Um... Fire up Hissing Quagmire. Go to combat. Attack Karn. Opponent, opponent, opponent. Take our opponent to five. Kill Karn. So the only thing I think our opponent could do that would absolutely eradicate us right now would be to have, like, Settle the Wreckage. Um, so they're going to replay Bramaz. So we need to draw Simic Signet really badly. Mentor. Mentor is a problem. Mentor Bramaz. Okay. We untap. We draw Tireless Tracker. Uh, yes, we no longer have to play around Settle. So, what do we do here? We cannot animate Hissing Quagmire and play Tireless Tracker. But Tracker is better when we have lands to actually play after the fact. So, I think we just, like, animate everything... Swing in. Opponent's going to do their blocks. 
They'll throw something on the beast. They'll have to block one of the tutus with Mentor. If they have a Swords, that's really bad. But there's nothing we can do about that. Okay. Fire up Quagmire. Fire up Mute Vault. Go to combat. Uh, Scalding Tarn? Scalding Tarn found no lands. It was a fail to find Six Sigma. We have both mountains and our only island. It was worse than cracking for non-blue. Okay. Um, so we're going to kill the token. Opponent is going to take four. They block Mentor on the Death Touch guy, so even with Prowess, we know he's going to die. Okay. They did not block Simulacrum, so we do not get an extra draw. And we pass. So right now we have two lethal threats. <laughs> It <laughs> failed, what the hell? This is not Pokemon. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, Pota plays to Fairy. Hero of Dominaria. Unless they're holding removal, I think they actually have to tuck here. Nope, they drew. Well, where is it? Ah, Selfless Spirit, okay. Um, they have a Vigilance token. So we have a Firebolt in the deck, but it's pretty deep in the deck. Okay, they untap two lands. We untap. We draw. Signet. That's not good. So play Tracker. Play Signet. And we gotta pass the turn. What are you whining about? What's the problem? Whatever you're whining about over there, you probably shouldn't be getting into it. I'm gonna have to take a quick break after this uh, after this game here. So opponent puts Tux Tireless Tracker. They have like Fractured Identity or something. Ah, uh, they have Cloud Skate. Okay. Well, it doesn't have Haste. They can bounce some Mulecrim though. We have to animate with Mutavault and block. So put a goes to combat. Attacks for six. Oh, actually, we're just dead, even if we do block Bramaz. Okay. Salulacrum? Is that is that how I sound? Okay. Um Thinking this through. We're going to add a basic island and run it back. Okay, uh, so that hand, keep in mind, we did mulligan to five, and we still got our opponent to one life. All right. Um, we can make a big hanger back pretty quickly. We also have Ramanop Scalding Tarn, which can fetch four lands. Uh, I think I'm willing to keep this. So play Scalding Tarn. Next time we see the deck, walk me through this pile. Yeah, no problem. Um, fetch with Scalding Tarn. We'll get an island. Um, play Mox. So yeah, I'm thinking if we wait, it's going to be the same size anyway. So yeah, Walker turn one is correct. Pass the turn. Kind of hoping my opponent starts with a one drop. Okay. Draw Thrag Tusk. Play Forest. Play Basalt Monolith. Go to combat. Attack for one. Okay, opponent goes to nine. They play an island. And they pass. We untap. We draw Signet. So they could have days. I think we play Thrag Tusk and leave up red mana here. This plays around Mana Tithe. This plays around days. Does not play around like negate or not negate, but uh, mana leak. Okay, now we pass, so we can start leveling up the walking hangerback walker. I don't know why I said walking. I was about to say walking ballista. But it plays planes, plays mentor. Sweet. Level up hangerback. We draw island. Play island. Firebolt mentor. Just level up hangerback now. Play signet. And attack for five. Take our opponent to 14. Pass the turn. 
opponent Lingering Souls. Okay, we untap. We draw Emery, Lurker of the Lock, which can be very good for us here, depending. So we go to combat, attack for eight. Opponent probably's got a chump. Okay, we take three, play Emery, go Millen. We mill Mox Emerald, Fast Bond, some lands, play Ramanop, play Wandering Fumarol. Pass turn, you officially passed your Magisters. Dude, nice! Congratulations! Does the, uh, I forget, Master's Degree, that gives you a title, doesn't it? Oh yeah, and you moved in! Congratulations! Big time move up. Nice. <laughs> uh. When it plays to fairy, Tux Thrag Tusk gives us a beast... Okay, we untap, we draw Signet. Um, do we want to shuffle Thrag Tusk away? I don't think we do. So play a Swamp, play Signet, animate Fumarol, go to combat. Oh wait, we can play Mox Emerald. Is that worth it rather than having the one power attack? I actually think that's fine. We'll play Mox Emerald. Go to combat. Attack our opponent. Attack our opponent. Attack to fairy. Attack to fairy. Okay, opponent chumps there. That's fine. Switch Fumarol's power and toughness. Okay. Kill to fairy. Take our opponent to seven. And pass. So our opponent would have to have some very good cards to get out of this. Snapcaster Mage for Lingering Souls because they don't have the black mana to flash it back. It's kind of brutal. Okay. We untap. Ooh, that's dirty. So play Scalding Turn. I don't think we fetched or anything yet to shuffle. Screen name to Poon Master. Oh man. Well, I I cannot officially condone that, even if it is sort of funny to me. But you do you. Um. Okay, let me think here. Is there a way we can just kill our opponent? Like we're definitely swinging out this turn, and we're probably playing Jitte and animating. I'm probably making this way harder than it needs to be. Play Jitte. Um. You know we'll suit up Emery. Emery seems unassuming. So we will fire up Fumarol. Go to combat. Attack with everybody. <laughs> Play with octopuses. I haven't for a while now. I've mentioned this. <laughs> but I used to manage software that was called Octopus uh, at work. Alright, so opponent blocks Wandering Fumarol, which is fine. They double block Hangerback. So I was considering leaving Hangerback back because my opponent could have a Wrath here, but even if they have a Wrath, it has to be a 4 mana Wrath and they have to strip mine Fumarol. Okay. So Jitte and Hangerback trigger. Okay. Opponents at 1. If we untap, we flashback Firebolt and win. So they would have to have Wrath. Strip Mine, Fumarol, and Force of Will, or Negation, to get out of this. I think we've got them. Dude, you are so needy. They Strip Mine our Swamp. Sure. They play Wasteland. They Wasteland Fumarol. Sure. Show me the Supreme Verdict! It's only work if you don't enjoy it. Okay, so with our dumpster fire of a deck, we are currently 2-0. and oh. This is the deck, Six Sigma. This is what I'm dealing with right now. We were past three moxes. Three. So we took them. And originally I was going to go, I got mox ruby first and I was like, oh, maybe I can do a mono red thing. I got no red cards. 
So I was like, okay, well, let's do artifact ramp. So I took, like, blue-red fixing and, like, started taking signets and other ramp with some mulecrum. And I was like, oh, we could do a wildfire smokestack style of deck. And pack three rolled around, and halfway through pack three, we were like, we don't have any ways to actually win the game or things to threaten our opponent with. Uh, so then I had to, like, frantically pick Hangerback and Thrag Tusk and luckily got a Titan. So yeah, this is basically insane artifact ramp with almost no payoffs. All right. Hey, I got to be right back. I have to let the dog out and see if I can calm him down for a second because I cannot focus. Um, I will be right back. Okay. Sorry for the wait, everybody. Had to let the dog out. Now. I've gotten myself some alcohol to help me survive round three. Because what I'm doing right now feels like it shouldn't be legal. Anyway, um, I think we are going to make the same adjustment. We're going to add an extra island, just in case. And uh, we're going to run 41 cards. Without further ado, let's go into round three, shall we? All right, round three, here we go. Okay, quick plug while we're getting set up here. Y'all should definitely check out my YouTube channel. Same username there as you find me here. I post a full-length VOD every day. So, um, this hand is technically serviceable. I'm going to Mulligan. We have way more explosive starts than that. Like this one, as an example. Um, I will keep this hand. I'm gonna go ahead. I think I put back Master. I would. I, I need the lands. Um, we either put back Master or we put back Tracker. Okay, hang on. Let, let me think about the sequence here. So the sequence is: if we start tap land, we untap, play a Mox, play a land, play Tracker. But then we don't have a land to activate Tracker. Alternatively. We play a land, we play a mox, we play a signet, we play tracker, we play a tap land. Okay, I think I put back master here. Welcome back, Six Sigma. Sorry I had to step away there for a second. Turn one tracker is cool. This is not quite turn one tracker, unfortunately. So we start Blooming Marsh, we play Mox Emerald, and we play Selesnia Signet. No worries. No! We get absolutely destroyed by Inquisition taking Tracker. Ah, uh, brutal. Alright, deck. Next turn, Smokestack. Let's do it. But it plays a Plains. Passes. Smokestack! Oh, it's a Mox Jet. So, play a Forest. Play the Mox. We'll just pass. Pono plays a planes. Passes. We draw. Come on, hanger back. Okay, smokestack. Smokestack. Our, my drink of choice right now is Coke and vodka. Um So I guess we just play smokestack. And we pass. Pono plays a monastery mentor which we need to terminate with extreme prejudice. So we hopefully will draw like a firebolt or just anything that we can use to... So we stack the triggers like this. So we sack zero permanence. Then we tick up smokestack and draw Thrawn Dynamo, which is not ex especially useful here. We are going to play it because it is another permanent for smokestack. The problem here is if our opponent has any real number of instants and sorceries, yeah, this is what's going to happen. The opponent makes a token. They sack the token. They play a swamp. They pass the turn, they attack for three. Come on, hanger back. So I'm going to sack Mox Emerald here. And then I am going to tick up Smokestack to two. Okay, Thrag Tusk is good. Play Thrag Tusk. Gain five life. Opponent goes for the throat. So it looks like they're mentor plus kill spells. 
Okay. Opponent sacks two permanents. They play a planes. Four mana for a ravenous chupacabra to kill our beast. So it can no longer wield Jitte. They get in for two. We take two, go to 20. So we untap. We have to sack two permanents here. I think it's Forest Mox Jet. Okay. Um, so if we tick up Smokestack, next turn we could sack Signet, Jitte, and Smokestack. The problem is, if our opponent has an instant and has a token they can sack, they don't lose very much. And there's not a lot of cards. If we drew a braid and we could have braid smokestack on their end step, we'd actually be in a fantastic spot. The problem is we can't guarantee that that's the case. So we're going to not put a counter on smokestack. Okay, hissing quagmire. Um, we can get away without actually sacking smokestack or sacking jitte, I think. Potentially. So opponent plays Gonti. Looks at the top four cards of our deck. Picks up a face down card. Attacks us for two. That's fine. Okay, so on our upkeep. On our upkeep, we can animate. Um, hissing Quagmire. Uh, we got a sack. So I don't want to sack Jitte. I actually want to equip, which means I can't sack Thrawn Dynamo and I can't sack Jitte. Uh, this might be the turn I have to give up on Smokestack. But I think I sack Blooming Marsh and... Yeah, I think I have to sack Blooming Marsh and Smokestack. Okay. We draw. Duretti. Okay, Duretti is not a bad backup here. Go to combat. Attack for two. Okay, opponent blocks. They trade. We get two one one or two counters on Jitte. We immediately kill Mentor. No, it's fine. Quagmire has death touch too. I actually was okay with losing Quagmire there. I should have been more vocal about what I was actually doing. Opponent of Braids, Thrawn Dynamo, which does put a little bit of a wrench in my plans right now. But we draw a mountain. Okay, pass the turn. The Faith's Fetters Wandering Fumarol. Okay, that's fine. We draw a swamp. Play a swamp. Play to ready. We can get back Smokestack, but our opponent has more permanence than us. So just plus to ready, pass the turn. Oh man, if we alt to ready and get back Smokestack, opponent concedes. Oh man, that is not what I expected to happen there. Well, we're in round three, and it's looking like we might actually have a chance at winning here. We're 3 0 with a deck I never would have dreamed would have had a chance. Um, and there are definitely hands that we can play that will just win the game on the spot. I am going to bring in Lightning Strike, simply because Mentor is such a huge problem. I'm going to take out Cultivate, because I think Cultivate is actually pretty bad in our deck. And we're going to run it back. Time for game two of round three. Ooh, Signet, Monolith, Urza, and potential Urza. You hate Duretti's alt? I've never actually played against Duretti. Oh, um, Duretti's ultimate is at the end of your turn, whenever, if an artifact went to the graveyard this turn, reanimate it, basically. Um, I think this hand is keepable. It's a little slow but I think it's keepable. 
All I know is Duretti's ultimate with smokestack means you're going to be sacking your whole board every turn. We can throw cards together as long as we have a bunch of Moxen. Yeah, that's the thing that I really like about um, any sort of vintage cube. It's like, you can play whatever as long as you do something powerful in the early part of the game. You have a chance of success, basically. Opponent takes Signet. Interesting. We draw Bonfire. Very unfortunate. Play an island past the turn. Opponent plays a Swamp. Passes. We draw Thrawn Dynamo. Play a Swamp. Pass the turn. We do need another land, though, pretty badly. Oh, no worries, man. No worries at all. Okay, we draw a mountain. Play a mountain. Play Basalt Monolith. Pass the turn. Put a plays a Plains. And passes. We draw. Mox Ruby. Play Mox. Play Thrawn Dynamo. And pass the turn. If we draw another island, we're in a pretty sweet spot with Urza. Okay, opponent flashes in Restoration Angel, that's fine. It's not like they're gonna kiki us. Okay, opponent plays a Swamp. Inquisition, says my opponent. Well, the problem is they're gonna take Bonfire. But there's nothing we can do about that. Okay. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks us for three. That's fine. Okay. Untap Basalt Monolith. We untap. We draw. Master of the Wild Hunt with no green sources. Brutal. Um, go ahead and play Smokestack. And pass the turn. Yeah, opponent plays a swamp. Problem is, Smokestack is going to do a lot of nothing for uh, a whole lot of nothing for a very long time. That is a huge problem. Okay, opponent attacks us for three. Take and go to fourteen. We untap. Uh, we are not putting any counters on Smokestack. Uh, the problem is, we needed like Bonfire to be able to answer this board. I don't think there's anything we can do at this point. I actually think we lost to just our opponent casting a Grave Titan. Which is pretty bad. But opponent did have the hand hate for our acceleration. We're not going to put a counter on it. We draw to ready. Who does nothing? I think. Play to ready. Uptick to ready. Discard master and braid. Okay, yep. Let's go to the next game. There's there's nothing in our deck that actually gets us out of this situation, so. We are going to be on the play for our last game here. There's nothing we can really board. Like, a moat would be amazing if we could ever cast it, but we can't. There's just no way. Um, because we have no rainbow fixing. We do have a white source in the form of Selesnia Signet, but that doesn't mean anything. So, we're just going to run it back. Hope we get a good fast hand that does something incredibly broken very quickly. Like, if we could play a turn one smokestack, uh, that kind of a thing. Okay, we'd love to play first. Um, considering our opponent has had Inquisition or Thoughtseize every single game, I don't think this hand's worth keeping. We're going to mulligan. This hand, however, is quite a bit better. I will keep, I'm going to put back a Swamp. What's the plan for the rest of the night? I wasn't sure. Uh, I could play more Core 2021. I could, um, I could play more Vintage Cube. I don't really have any Constructed decks lined up, but I know you have a ton of Constructed lists, so we could play some Constructed. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Didn't really plan it out very well. Inquisition me, bro. Inquisition me! 41 cards. I run 41 cards all the time. Also, great whip there. Um, we draw a Mutavault, play Forest, 
pass the turn. But it plays a planes. Three mana, they play Mentor. We untap. We draw Wildfire. Wildfire is looking pretty nice, actually. So play Solemn. Go Ramping. Get a Mountain. Pass the turn. Okay. Pota plays a Swamp. Lilia on his triumph. They're gonna make a sack. They get a token, that's fine. We sack some Mulacrum. We will draw a card. Golgari Signet. Okay. When it gets in for three, we untap, we draw Thrag Tusk. So we're on five mana. We are going to. So we can use four of it to go to four. Yeah, we're gonna play Thrawn Dynamo and Golgari Signet this turn. Actually, we could animate Mutavault and suit it up with Jitte, but I feel like that's a huge trap. We'll just play Signet and pass. Like, that's going to let us follow up our Wildfire with uh, Thrag Tusk. So, okay, opponent plays a Plains. As long as they don't have Thought Seize for Wildfire, we should actually win this game. Mind Twist. Opponent has Mind Twist. Okay, opponent hits us for five. It's fine. We untap. We draw a hanger back. Play an enormous hanger back. Pass the turn. Hanger back gets around go for the throat, which our opponent is playing, but we haven't seen yet this game. Man, that wildfire would have absolutely destroyed them. Okay, opponent has a Grave Titan. Makes a million tokens. We draw Ramanop Excavator, which is worth playing. So play Ramanop Excavator, play Scalding Tarn. <sighs> Suit up the hanger back. Go to combat. Attack for four. If our opponent blocks with Grave Titan, we have to use the Jitte counters to kill Grave Titan. If they don't block with Grave Titan, we'll pretty much instantly kill Mentor. Okay, so they're going to double block with the zombie tokens. That's fine. Okay. We get some charge counters on Jitte. And then we get some 1-1s. One okay, second main... We are going to equip Excavator and pass. So if they attack with Grave Titan, we can actually double plus two plus two our Ramanomp Excavator and kill it. Opponent's going to have a ton of 1-1s one though, and we do not have our board wipe. We're basically drawing live to Bonfire, and that's it. So opponent draws a card for their turn. They go to combat. They attack with one Titany boy, make some zombies. Problem is, if they have creature removal, they can hit Ramanomp Excavator, and they almost certainly do. Uh, we're, we're just totally screwed. So if our opponent is doesn't know exactly what they do and they just blow a removal here, that would be better. If they wait until we use the plus two plus two mode, and we get way less value. Okay, please work. Restoration Angeled. Oh my goodness. YouTube, if you'd like to see the waste nos list and be in court, uh, wow, I can't even speak. If you would like to see the waste not list and be included in the community, join the Discord. So we lose all of our Jitte counters. We need to we need to miracle bonfire. We already had one insane miracle bonfire. We need another one in order to win. <gasps> oh my God! It happened. It's happening. That's twice now. Twice Bonfire has come to our rescue. Thank the magic gods. <laughs> yeah, get him. Oh my god. Our trials and tribulations. The magic gods are pleased with our jank wielding right now. Oh my god. 
There, that was a one in twenty six chance, and that was our only chance of winning. Holy three zero to Vintage Cube League! <laughs> oh yes! All right. So I'm gonna do a quick plug for the YouTube here. If you like this kind of content, there's more Vintage Cube coming up. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. I, we really did not deserve to win this. We got severely lucky. We had sweet plays. We had three Moxen and like no payoffs. So absolutely, if you watched it all the way through, please consider subscribing to the channel and following me on Twitch. Same username there as you can find me on here. And uh, yeah, know that you're all wonderful human beings. And uh, Six Sigma's plugged, plugged the Discord already, so... <laughs> Before I end the video, though, we're going to go ahead and quickly open this treasure chest, as I usually do when we get a treasure chest. Let's hope for something good. 25 play points and a Raksha Golden, Cl Golden Cub. Well, cool.